Come on. Welcome back. This is Talk to Life. Early money, unlimited inspiration with Ruth TV. Ade Dokun. Yay! This is my face. Yee! <laughs> wow. I hope my face looks good because I didn't even check myself in the mirror before I came up here. It's alright. Everything's gonna be your yay family. What's going on? How was your weekend? Tired? Yes. So it's another day. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we celebrate you for the grace that is bestowed upon us that is not in vain. You give us the grace and you give us the decision, the leverage of the grace, and you say we should do this. Even when we are tired, you strengthen us. We don't know what to say, you dictate to us. We don't know how to turn, you give us direction. You showed us what to say, what not to say. You give us, you comport us. Sometimes you tell us, hey, don't. Thank you. You get us to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have three more days from today to be 230 days of every day. How do we get here? I don't know. That's why. I said, it's not me, Roti. It is not me, but I know it is not me. So I return all the glory, lift you on my two hands to look at you to the Lord. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be all. The glory must be all the glory must be to the Lord. Lord, as you have done it for one and twenty-six day, today it's another addition. Please do it again. Give me word to bless the people. Use me as a tool to bless the people. Push me aside and you do it. Bless your people. Let everyone that showed up here today live here with unlimited blessing. Give them grace to be able to understand my word. Don't let me speak above their head. Don't let me speak below them. Let me speak as a target. Let it hit their call. Let it hit their heart. And let it hit their point of their need. And at the end of it all, oh Lord, everyone listening to me right now, or that will be watching this later, there will be a transformed woman and my man. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, amen. Welcome back. This is Talk to Life, early money, unlimited inspiration with Roti Mi Adedokun. Hey, how are everybody doing? Thank you for those witches. Yes, so today I'll be sharing with you on the subject of knowledge. Knowledge. Subject of knowledge. Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus Christ said, and you, you, we know the truth. You will know it. <laughs> and the truth that you know will set you free. Right? That's what people say. No, it's not set free. It is make free. You know, when I teach people, say, why do you say this, Roti B? Uh, no, I'm telling you the truth. If you don't read the Bible, you'll be a victim of it. If you live by what your pastor is teaching you, you will never be a good Christian. If you live by what you hear from, from somebody, you will never be a good Christian. I want you to be like those Christians in the heart, that they will go back home and reason with themselves what they have been taught. If I have listened to only what I heard from Bishop David Oedipo, maybe you wouldn't have met me here today. I did my personal study. I stepped out of boundary. I made mistake. I learned. All just because 
I'm on the search of knowledge. It is only what you know that makes free. You don't set free. It makes you free. Set free means they just open a particular place for you to go. But make free means you have the capacity to unlock it yourself. They give you the master key. So when the door is shut, another one is open. You open it. Where there is no way you create one for yourself. Because those who are really free are those who don't need anybody to be themselves. That is what makes United States number one. It's a land that you can come with nothing and end with anything. Just man, one man will just build and have, and it, be, it can dictate what the people hear from the president. One man built and have, then he can remove what the president is saying. I want you to think about it. You just build half from a secondary school student, sorry, a university school student. You build an app, and that app has half almost three billion people on it right now. Just one thing that you do, you shall know, what you know make you free. They don't set you free. You don't need to be set free. You need to be made free. Make free simply means you are in charge of yourself. I've said it in my preaching today. A lady, when I was in San Antonio, she came to me and said, Pastor, uh, she said, what is it? He said, my husband is embarrassing me. I said, what? He told me I'm spending too much money. I said, you, are you spending too much money? He said, no. He said, what do you do with money? He said, I buy, it, I buy this. I buy this because our husband lives in Nigeria. He works in oil and gas. And uh, the ladies in the U.S. And the husband said, hey, this, and you waste too much money. And I pray. I said, please, bring your hand. Oh, Lord, give her her own money. Change the tone of the house. And I pray for her. She brought me a, a seed. Some perfume and money. I love some body spray. And she gave it to me and said, and I pray for her. And that's it. The, you know what happened? This lady got a job for like $7,000 a month. <laughs> you don't know what that means? So right now, the language of home has changed. Now the husband is a baby, okay, what can we, what, let, let's do some planning together about the money. It's not like, hey, hey, this is what I have. Because if you are not contributing, you will be dictated to. But if you are contributing, they will seek your counsel. I pray for you today. That wherever you have been pushed aside because you cannot contribute money-wise, God will put into your own hand your own money. That people will need your presence to make things happen. In the mighty name of Jesus. No, the word of the Lord, they make Free. They don't set free. They make you free. You know it. You learn it. You know it. And when you learn it, you know it. Things will change. October 5th, 2020. I want you to feel like, remember, I want you to picture, move back to your secondary school days. I don't know some of you that are Nigerians. Move back to your secondary school. I want you to close your eyes. Move back to those secondary school days. If your class teacher show up in class and he has taught every one of you and he said, hey, today, I want to make sure every one of you demonstrate what I've taught you. If you really know it, even when you don't, even when you don't really know it, if you can put up your hand, they will say, no, 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 no. We want people who, anyone who can hide their hands, these are the people the teacher will focus on, thinking that they don't know it. Not knowing that those who even hide, uh, uh, hide their hands know it better than those who put it up a hand. What am I trying to say is this. In life, your confidence level is a function of knowing level. <clears throat> your confidence level is because of what you know. What you know will make you to be known. What you know will make you to be known. You can never be known more than what you know. What you know creates a pathway for your destiny. If you are not a person who is ready to know, you can never be known. Opportunity, goodness, Chances, 
move towards those who know. You must know. Those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Those who know, those who have the knowledge of the Lord. Why? Because my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and the people perish for lack of knowledge. What you know sets free. Right? No, it doesn't set free. It makes free. So, knowledge creates solution that will answer all questions. I love that. Knowledge Create solution that will answer to you all question of life. Knowledge creates solution that will answer for you all the questions of life. All the questions. Because life we ask a question. Your bank account we ask a question. Your love with your husband, your wife, we ask a question. Your children, we ask a question. The government of your country, we ask a question. Your, your boss, we ask a question. Your career, we ask a question. But if you don't know, you will give up. Because these questions are not predetermined. They, they come when you don't expect. The man who loves you, who chases you every time, after first child, and your belly flat tummy that you have before, is not coming out, it's not protruding, and the man will say, hey, hey, is this the woman that I got married to? That is the love asking you question. Your life will ask you question. You have saved, you have saved. All of a sudden you invested the money, and when you invest the money, the money disappears. That is when finances will ask you question. You have a choice not to, not to save, not to invest again, and to start spending your money. But what till I know? Your finances, we ask a question. You have labored. You show up before time. You, la you leave after time. You do what your boss wants. And when it's time for promotion, they give that promotion to somebody else. That is when your career is asking you a question. Are you ready for the question? Life, we ask a question. But your readiness to know, we create a solution. Ability to respond. I'm not that super, super something. But my wife tells me, baby, why is that you have an answer to everything? Those who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. 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 What you know is what will make you to be known. What you know guarantees you life. What you know, it guarantees you life. It is not a life that you live, you go to work, come back, pay rent, pay for car, grow children. Is that all? <laughs> no, there is more to life. Real life is where you are a solution to the problem of people. Real life is where you are an answer to somebody's question. Somebody has been praying to God for a long time, and yet God sent you to go and start that business and, and employ that person. God has been, somebody has been praying to God, say, God, show me my own person who is going to mentor me, but you will not start a program like this. No, what you know guarantees you life. Gives you life. You are not living if you live by paycheck. You are living where you are creating paycheck. Whoa, I love that. You are not living your life when you are taking paycheck. You are only living your life when you are giving now paycheck. Three, three part category of people. There are people who, give, who, who take paycheck. There are people who share in profits. But there are people who determine how much the paycheck guy earn and who determine the investor earn. I call them entrepreneurs. People who run businesses. I don't know what you, where you are standing today, but I want you to step out and let knowledge become your boyfriend. Let knowledge embrace you. I want you to hug knowledge. I want you to leave stupidity. I want you to chase knowledge. I want you to serve knowledge. I want you to know knowledge and not let knowledge know you. 
Don't think your certificate will become anything. Certificate does not make it is knowledge that does. Have you two heard of many first class students who are battered failure in life? Because they, are, they, they, don't, they think knowledge or what they learn in four words of class is all they need. No. What you need is more than the four corner of place. When you are tested, you got a hey, forget about it. I know them. With all due respect, when I was in secondary school, there is this guy. He happened to be our head boy. Very, I've never seen a smart boy like that. And all of a sudden, he just disappeared to the air. Nobody knew where he is again. First boy. I know many, many smart guys. When I was in Lagos State Polytechnic, these are the A students. Where are they? They disappear. They don't even exist again. Ah! I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. As other people fizzle out, they fizzle out into the air, nobody sees them again. But you, you will stand. In the next five years, you will stand better. In the next 10 years, people will, will see you. You will become a pillar, a pillar, a pillar, a pillar that people will surround. You will lift them up. They will say, thank God for the day that the God introduced you to them. You will never disappear. Oh, I'm praying for you. You will never disappear. You will never disappear. Two years from now, three years from now, four years from now, you will be there standing. In the mighty name of Jesus. No, let me tell you something. When we started Talk to Life, when we started Talk to Life, mm -hmm. there are some people who are there. Every day, they are there. Every day. They comment the same message just like Sister Things, my sister told you. The same message. And all of a sudden, they are nowhere to be found again. And the Lord told me, he said they are coming back. But when they come back, they must have been behind. God told me, if you live your life based on how people receive you, then you don't know who sent you. Help me to put it like that. Those who live their life based on what people, how people receive them. They are not qualified. They, are not, they don't know who called them. I don't want to miss that part. If you live your life based on how people receive you, then you don't know who called you. If you know who called you, is it faithful is it who has called you? Who himself will do it? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. Faithful is it who has called you? Who himself will do it? First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24. If you live your life based on what how, based on how people receive you, then you don't know the person who called you. Listen, everybody, I don't know where you are watching from around the world. If nobody watches this program, eh, go and check our heli program in June. When I say 127, it's not like I'm making number up. Go and check it. It's, everything is there. I have video to show. We record everything. <laughs> you don't understand the demand. The demand. So, if you live your life based on how people receive you, then you don't know who called you. God said, I will take care of you. And that's it. When God said, I will take care of you, that is it. When God said, I will take care of you, that is it. Oh, thank you, man. <laughs> what am I saying today? Go for knowledge. That's all you need. I say, number one, what you know is what will make you to be known. Number two, what you know guarantees you a life. Number three, what you know makes you, it creates you. When you know something, you are a different being. When you know something, you develop a, a kind of a a, a defense for yourself. So knowledge makes you a... Okay, let me put it in. Let me put it in. Oh, this is tough. Thank you, Jesus. 
Knowledge recreates you. Let me put it that way. Knowledge recreates you. As a beautiful lady, if you think you are, if you, if you are expecting love from a man before you give him your respect, you have missed it. Everything is a function of who commanded you, not who is receiving you. I don't expect respect from my wife. I just love her because God said so. I've said it before. If you live your life based on who received you, then you don't know who called you. And guess what? Anytime you do anything for the sake of the person who commanded you, the people that will receive you will receive you from their heart. Because the wise will sow seeds before they expect harvest. But the average will take, we want to expect, will be expecting harvest before they sow seed. So, number one, what you know makes you to be known. Number two, what you know guarantees you life. Number three, what you know recreates you. So, as knowledge recreates you. Number four, what you know creates a pathway to your destiny. No matter how close to everybody, for you, it will never be close to you. Life will not be close to you. Life will not be close to you. So let me quickly give you one or two definitions because time has gone. One, what is knowledge? Knowledge is the mother of light. Wow! You can never live in light, illumination, if you don't go. No. My people are destroyed and my people perish, not for lack of not going to church. Some people, their pastor will preach to them and they will take note, take note, take note, take note, take note. They get home, they will just dump the note. <laughs> Devil will never stop you to take notes, but he will stop you to read notes. Help me to put it out there like that, please. Help me to put it out like that. Devil will stop you. He will not stop you not to take notes, but he will stop you to read notes. Because not, there is nothing in taking notes, but everything is reading notes. Write it down. You, you, you claim a portion if you can take, it, if you can take notes. You hone your portion. If you can work, you can read it. Reading brings back knowledge and make it retentive memory. Reading is the capacity that take everything that has been said to you, put it together, and give it to you. You never own what you don't read. Ownership is a function of reading. It's not by what you get. You can, I can speak fire to you right now. Until you read it. Reading simply reading means two things. Either you get back home and meditate on it. Meditation, you you know, there are some kind of uh, animals in biology that they have two, two, two stomachs. Go and go and double check them. Once they, they once they get the grass, especially goats, when they get the, they chew the grass, they will eat it right, but they will depart from people and go to a sacred place and lie down and vomit it. They will vomit what they have chewed. And they will not eat it again before it gets to the digestive system. So, it will never be productive to that animal just eating it once. The same way, if a pastor preached to you, it is your responsibility to go and what? And look at it. Sometimes he said, I don't take notes in church. Then record it on your phone. You know, let me tell you something. We live in the world that everything is easy now. You can be in phone. You can be in the church. And turn your, your recorder on to record everything the pastor has said. Once you are going on, play it. You don't need to buy the CD. And most of the church put their stuff on YouTube. Go on YouTube. This thing is simple. In 2012, when I got to America, the Lord told me, he said, if you are not a millionaire, you have to be blamed. I said, how could I come from Nigeria? And I just heard that, that if I'm not a millionaire, I'm to be blamed. The Lord said, the law of accusation. Write it down. The law of accusation. Everything is within reach if you can reach out. If you cannot reach out, you will never reach what is within your reach. The people you need, they are around you. The knowledge you need is around you. You can go to church and be talking, but you can't go to church and listen to go back home and meditate. Or you put it on your phone to replay again. Let me tell you something. Until there is second attempt, the first attempt is useless. Put it out, Alex. Put it out, please. 
or without second attempt, first attempt is useless. Many people think, as a young lady, when you see that guy, when the guy sees you, you pack yourself. You know, let me, okay, okay, let me tell you something. Some of you that are married or you are still single, let's say you have a date with your boyfriend. How long do you take you to prepare yourself? You want him to look good. You want to look good so he can see you and he can be happy. So by the time you get married, where, where is those plan? No. Without second attempt, the first attempt is useless. You are a lady, keep your game. You know, <laughs> what people don't know is this. They will say, why do you want to get married to this girl? He said, I love her. He said, lie. <laughs> I love her. Okay. Okay. After first child, second child, and you start seeing those bodies, <laughs> the flat tummy has not protruding. Let me tell you something. As a lady, never forget that the first thing that man sees around you, not your character, he sees your beauty, chemistry. So it connects, there's a Bluetooth. <laughs> If you forget to turn on the Bluetooth, you are gone. How could you, how could you marry to a man and inside the house, all you just do is to tie a part on your chest? Who did that to you? Who cursed you? You can't put a bob shot, make his head to be turning. You know, people use spirituality to forget that there is chemistry or there is chemistry. It's the same guy that saw you running after you. You have to allow him to be chasing you all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. And for you, bros, hmm? because the sister don't catch up with her game, doesn't mean you forget. She's the same girl. Eh? She's the same girl. Make a provision for your girlfriend, for your wife. No, I'm not sure about your girlfriend because I didn't know you guys are married yet. <laughs> Make provision. Take her out. Let her do her nails. Let her do her makeup. And that is what makes a girl. Buy her 12 inches eye heel. These are the things that you saw that makes you to be chasing that. So why is that you don't want to do it again? And for you, lady, don't allow a man to lie to you. They say you sit at home. They call you a uh, housewife. Ah, that is cause wife. Write it down. Every housewife is a cause wife. Because they will dictate how much you will spend. They will dictate what you will buy. They will even give you money for bra and pint. That is shameful. If somebody has to pay you to go and buy your undies, these are lady things. You're supposed to bring money out by yourself. My wife and I, she works, and we both make money. When the money comes, we have a provision for everything. There are some things she wants to do. I don't need to get it. It's not my business. In my business, okay, every paycheck, we take $50 out or $100 out to take care of business. We, we, we live in, in our world, in our house, there is nothing like my money. We don't do that here. It's our money. Okay? So what I'm trying to say is that you should develop a mindset. Every housewife is a housewife. Don't do it. Refuse it. Talk if you are dating that man right now. Tell him, I'm not housewife. No matter what the man is making, make your money. I'm a man, I'm talking to you, and I know what I'm talking about. If you like, pay attention. If you like, don't care. Eh? You will see the greatest disappointment in your life if you marry a man who keeps you at home. To do what? To watch Netflix. Okay. So, knowledge is the mother of lies. It guarantees you confidence in the midst of chaos and darkness. Never! Read books about how to get into the heart of a man, your husband. Read books on how to get the best of your wife. You know, people let, they use spirituality to cover. That is why we see more divorce in Christianity than before. Because people just rush into it. I love you, I love you. Monday, they know each other. Tuesday, they date. Wednesday, they engage. Thursday, they got married. Friday, they love themselves. Saturday, trouble. Sunday, they divorce. And it's a pattern now. But people don't know. It is not love that keeps marriage. It is the fear of God that does. It is not love. Forget love. You know, love attracts you. Fear of love retain you. <laughs> Knowledge 
I've been in this game a long time ago. Love. Love attracts. As a lady, don't just think, okay, you love me, you love me. Truly say it. But do you know it's hard? <laughs> Two things you should do to keep your man. Every lady. Eh? Pray. Tell God to saturate his heart. Tell God to block his eyes. From what? Block his eyes to things that is not edified. God should saturate his eyes with the fear. When a man fears God, ah, you don't know what it is. When a man fears God, he's not in love with you again. One thing I told my wife, I don't actually say this. I said, I deal with you, but I report to God. Hmm. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it is for you to be, for devil to be haunting you. You don't know the danger that pastor faces with other girls. But when a man fears God, he does, he's not dealing with you again. He's reporting to God. That's how he says it. Lord, saturate his heart with your fear and block his eyes to the things that do not edify. That's the prayer you're supposed to pray for your husband every day. If he's sleeping, quietly lay hands on him, on his head. Lord, bless him. He will never step out of your will. He will never step into evil. You don't let him see friends that will drag him away from you. Every, you don't need to tell him. When you cook for him, lay hands on that food. Rabo, kataya, katabada. No woman. No other woman will cook for you. Our marriage is born to stay. This is spiritual involvement. They will not tell you in marriage counseling. <laughs> Don't let, don't let me proceed. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's knowledge that we are talking about. Why are we talking about marriage? <laughs> it is well. So, knowledge is the mother of light. It guarantees confidence in the midst of chaos and darkness. So, nuggets of knowledge. What are the nuggets of knowledge? Number one, knowledge is appreciation. You have to acquire it. Buy the truth and sell it not. Is it Proverbs 23, 23 or 26? Help me to confirm it, somebody. Proverbs 23, maybe it's 26 or 23. I need to confirm that. He said, buy the truth. <laughs> truth is not free. Truth is not free. Every free thing is not good, and every good thing is not free. Proverbs 23, verse 23. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom, instruction, and understanding. Buy the truth and sell it not. Buy books, pay for seminars. And that reminds me, last Saturday of this month, we are going to be hosting 100 ladies. 100 ladies. The flyer will be out today or tomorrow. We're going to have three ladies who will be speaking alongside with me and my wife. We'll be sharing with you the power of a woman. The power of woman. The different power that you have. The power to know, the power to pray, you know, and the power to start your own thing. Eh? There was a particular brother, he's a very powerful guy. His call is to help ladies to develop market strategy, to develop a product and to sell it. You will really love it. I mean, there was a, a, another sister who come from a backstage. They call her Sparkle, uh, Sparkle Queen. Uh, Sparkle Queen. Very powerful lady. She'll be coming to speak to you. What am I trying to say? Get ready. Ladies, it's not free. It's not free. It's not free. The price will be there, but it's going to be affordable. Okay? It's going to be last Saturday. Mark your calendar. Mark sat uh, last Saturday in this month. In this month of October. I think October 31st or something like that. Amen. So let's proceed. Knowledge is appreciation. Buy the truth and sell it not. Knowledge is peace. When there is knowledge in you, you have peace of mind. Other people will be struggling. You just calming down. Remember that, boy? Mommy, calming down. <laughs> calming down. When you are struggling, you are, you are everywhere, it's because you are not knowledgeable about who you are in Christ. Number three, knowledge is life. When you have knowledge, you cannot die. I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about spiritual death, financial death, career death. You cannot die because there is only, I, let me tell you something. Except I don't have a connection, I can get anything that I want. I know what I'm talking about because I know how to. I know the language of king and queens. I know the language of world leaders. 
I pave my way to my name to be called. No matter where I find myself, if I'm meant to be there, give me one month, give me one year, I will get to the top there. Forget about I know how to play the game, but it's about knowledge. What you learn. Number four, knowledge is, is ruling your world. Knowledge helps you to rule your world. You are in charge. You have it the way you want it. You are in charge. If you are not knowledgeable, you will struggle. They will, pass, they will pass you around like soccer ball. That's not what you want. You have to know so you can rule. You have to know so you can rule. Number five, knowledge is you. What you do, your reflection, your capacity, your capability, your ability is a function, a function of what you know. So go and know more. Develop more so you can be ready more. Time has gone, but let me see what next. So, with what happens if you don't have knowledge? How can I lose this person? Sister, I don't know. I think I have to check you. Thank you. I need to say thank you to you. Thank you. So, five things you need to know. When there is absence of knowledge, what happens? One, doubt sets in. If you don't know yourself, you will think you are too tall. <laughs> if you don't know yourself, you will think you are too short. If you don't know yourself, you will think you are too big. If you don't know yourself, you say you, you are too what? You are too thin. Your knowledge tells you that you are the best. Your height is the best. How you speak is the best. Knowledge gives you confidence in yourself. No doubt. So, what happens? Without knowledge, self-doubt steps in. Number two, without knowledge, you will question God. Instead of you asking God questions, you will question Him. You know, there are two different things. People don't know. You can question people. You blame them. Why God? Why me, Lord? That's the question. You say, God, tell me, what is it that you want to have me do with this height of mine? With this body of mine, what do you think? Do you think I should teach lady who's going to have the same body? Hmm? Don't question God. Sorry, don't question God, right? Ask God questions. There are two different things. Number three, without knowledge, self-doubt, question God. Number three, you will lack provision. For every for every vision that God has given to you, your beauty, God knows you need money. If you don't have knowledge, you will, you, you will doubt God. You lack provision. Your marriage will be, see what is happening here? No. It's not like what is happening here because you lack knowledge to be able to sustain the situation. So, absence of knowledge or a life without knowledge, it, make, it brings self-doubt, it brings questioning God, lack provision. Number four, you live below standard. That is the worst thing. You live below what? Below standard. When I got to San Diego in 2012, and people there, there are, some people have been there long time, long than I do, and they say, you have to come to us, we have been here before you. I said, you don't even know. Me, that before I left Nigeria, I have sized the church. <laughs> you know, knowledge makes you to go ahead of them so they will keep following you no matter where you are. Put it, put it, put it out there, please. Put it out. Knowledge makes you to go ahead so when you get to that place, all of them will come behind you. I say, hey, come to us. I say, me, come to you. No. King don't come to people, they come to kings. Queen don't go to people, they come to queen. Forget that level. They cannot forget me in that place. In that church. They can't forget me. Forget about it. You know what? Anywhere Jesus goes, Jesus went with Paul. Two things will happen. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Guess what? What's going to happen? If there is no miracle, there will be riot. Jesus and Paul. Anywhere two of them goes, what? There is always what? Either miracle or riot. That was why the man with the evil spirit said, he said, Jesus I know, 
Paul I know. He said, who are you? He said, these are the people. Everywhere they go. So if you are a child of God that want to have impact, two things must happen wherever you go. If they don't like you, they will create what? A riot. If they like you, what happens? They will receive miracles. I stand here to pray for you this morning. As you step out to take your week, anyone who doesn't like you, may God give them an assignment. For those who like you, may they produce results that will support you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Don't ever make mistakes to beg people to follow you. If they leave you, they are not meant for you. So, without knowledge, self-doubt, you question God, you lack provision, you live below standard, and number five, you, you defeat purpose and deny your word. Did you see that? You, your purpose is to do something in this world. If you don't have knowledge that can fuel that purpose, what happens? You deny purpose. You will not be asking, say, God, am I sure I'm supposed to be living? Anytime you ask God a question like that, you know some, you are lacking knowledge. That's why you don't just defeat purpose, you deny your word. That's what people don't know. When you don't fulfill purpose to do what, if I'm not doing what I'm doing right now, one, I will never know I can speak for 127 days. Listen, go and look at it. Different word each day. Each day. I've never preached two, two messages. Today makes it the third time that I've been preaching today. Go and check it on YouTube. Different messages three times. <clears throat> Knowledge fuels purpose. Write it down. So if you are not knowledgeable, you will kill purpose. And if you kill purpose, you deny your word. Imagine a word without YouTube. Hmm, you should think, right? Imagine a word without Instagram. Maybe sister... I'm blessed to you. <laughs> man, what's your name, man? What's your name? I really appreciate what you're doing today, please. Maybe if there's no Instagram, somebody who is giving me fire, they are making me to preach well, will never be giving me that thing today. And if you're on YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are, you're on Zoom, without those people, you wouldn't be there. The question, how will I communicate with you if those people have not done what they're supposed to do? I can't pronounce that. Emilia Sintin. Sintin. What country are you watching from, man? Please help me. So, if you, you know, some of you right now, all you need to do is to learn how to cook and put your food. Some people will learn how to cook good meal and feed their husband well. Then love will come back to the family and they will thank you. They will thank you. They will thank you. You don't know what it is, the danger it need for you not to fulfill purpose. You will deny you will you will you will deny purpose and what happens? No, you kill purpose and what you deny your word. Amen. So those five things, that's all you need to know. Let us round up this morning. Wow, I love you. I'm supposed to be in England. A lot of a lot of people who watch this me are from England. Guess what? I need to come to England. I need to come to England. Maybe after this. You know, pandemic, COVID, everything dies now. We, get, we, we got to come. Make something happen in England. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Five ways to have, to have knowledge. <clears throat> Five ways to develop a heart for knowledge in everything that you do. Number one, ready to learn. Ready to learn. Learning don't come to you. You go to learning. Ready to learn. To learn what? To learn what you don't know. Number two, ready to know. People thought learning is knowing. No. You learn it by introduction. You know it by what? By study. It's not all that you know that you study. You learn it, you are exposed to it. But when you know it, it's when you own it. All these messages, I don't copy people's message. They are directly dictated from heaven to this boy. It's funny. 
But sometimes you'll be surprised that most of the teaching here, you just believe maybe I'm in the restroom. Maybe I'm just walking around the house. God say, hey, pick your phone. Well, today is about knowledge. Well, this is knowledge. This is what to do, what happened without knowledge. These are the nuggets of knowledge. This is how to get knowledge. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Simple. That's it. Ready to know. Number two, ready to learn. Sorry, ready to learn first, to expose you to whatever you want to know. And number two, ready to know, to study, to hone it. When you know, you hone. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Help me to write that. When you know, you hone. You don't hone it until you know it. No. You have to know it to hone it. Ownership is a function of knowing. Ownership. I need to write it down, please. It's a function of knowing. So, number, number three now. Number three, ready to know, sorry, ready to learn, number one, number two, ready to know. Now, number three, ready to be curious, curiosity. It is one thing that you know it, but you have to be curious, say, why is this? You know, let me tell you something. It's there are another layer. Until you streamline what you know, you will never be known. Wow, Jesus Christ, that's tough. You know, sometimes I, I'm taking notes myself. <laughs> because I've never heard it like that. Once you know so many things, the question is, what do you want them to know you for? That's where curiosity is setting. I want to be known for a life coach. What kind of life coach? What am I called to do? I'm called to teach the secret things of, of God to people who want to know. To raise kings so they can reign. To develop royal mentality. So I work on people's mind. So they can have a new mentality. And work and live. That's why I change everything on my LinkedIn. On my Facebook. On my YouTube. I change everything. I'm a mindset coach. Hmm? Biblical mindset coach. On a mission to develop kings and queens. So they can reign in this world. That is me. So ready to learn. Ready to know. Curiosity. Number four. Pay attention. When you are ready to streamline, to be known for one thing, be pay, pay attention. Because once you are taking this step, God will expose you to people who, has, who have that mindset. People who are running in that space already. There's wisdom for you to know. To what? To pay attention to them. Write this down. If you don't pay attention, you will end in the, the intention. And you will never smell distinction. If you don't pay attention, if you don't pay attention, you will end in distinction and you will not smell Distinction. I love that. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. This is life. I'm learning myself. If you don't pay attention, you will end in detention and you will never smell distinction. Did you hear what I said? Okay. It's not for everybody. You pay attention to people who have gone ahead of you. You learn from them. You buy into them. You save into them. You know, one of our mentors today, he was doing something, and I was praying, and the Lord told me, somebody came to our circle, and the person said, he needs people to have a one-on-one -on -one with that mentors of, of ours. And I don't, I, I don't know what happened. I just lost it. I was disconnected. Why praying this morning, the Lord told me that that is not what he's meant to say. I said, why? He said, what I told him is to tell you guys to sow into the life of your mentor. But he was afraid because people have paid for the program of already. So he was afraid to tell people that, hey, 
Come and so after you have paid. The Lord said, go there today and tell the people that everybody must so. Uh, and the Lord told me, hey, if you want to say that, be the first person to sow. And these mentors of our, I don't want to call names, every month I put in the list of the people who I give money. Let me tell you something. Seed is not a function of what you give. It's a function of what remains. So when you are sowing seed, how much is remaining to you? Jesus Christ finished preaching, I think in Luke 24 or 22. That's why people don't understand. Everybody must pay. Write it down. Everybody must pay. How do I know? Jesus finished preaching and he sat on the treasury board. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, brother Jesus. Why do you sit on treasury board? You say, we, people say we don't need money. Jesus said, no, no. <laughs> Wherever you are investing, that's where you will eat from. Okay. Jesus finished preaching. He sat on the treasury bus, bus, and everybody was bringing offering. You know, people that condemn pastor don't read Bible. They don't read that part. After Jesus Christ finished preaching, he sat on the treasury bus. He said, hey, come and give offering. Everybody, come and everybody must pay. Listen, some people get there, give a million dollars. Jesus just look at them and look past. Some people came there, ten thousand dollars. Jesus looked past. He doesn't care. Everybody was giving. And a woman came. She was, I can see that she doesn't have life. She was just moving. And she came there and she dropped two cents. And she dropped that two cents in the treasury box. And the boss makes a Jesus Christ said, What happened here? Jesus Christ did not call the woman. Say, come back. Come and take your money. Hey! <laughs> I'm teaching you life. Jesus did not call the woman back. Jesus told his disciple. He said, listen to that woman. He said, that woman that is going, she gave her. She's the best giver. Because your giving will only be productive. We only come back to you with power when it's a function of what remains. Not what you give. You can give ten dollars out of a million dollars. It is what remains. So this woman gave all. I gave all. Everybody must pay. I was thinking Jesus Christ to have pity on that woman to say, "Woman, come and take your two cents. God bless you." But Jesus Christ said, "No, this money, I demand me. He will receive a prophet in the name of the prophet. Will receive a prophet reward. You must receive that prophet first." You must receive that prophet first. You must receive that prophet first. And you receive by sowing seed into their life. A pastor will come to the church with time. And you never know that this guy was struggling. That his wife has fought him. Because they, they can't pay children's school fees. That they can't pay some money. And this guy will come and will bless you. And you will say, amen pastor. And you carry your bag and you leave. No. Write this down today. This will change your life. Anyone who blesses you online, physical, make it a point of responsibility and duty. Read my list. Anyone who blesses you, anyone who blesses you, make it a point of responsibility and duty to sow into their lives. So into their lives. Make it a point of responsibility and duty to sow into their lives. Don't let it escape you. Don't let it disappear from you. Sow into their lives. They deserve it. So into their lives. Ah. So, pay attention. If you don't want to end in the detention and not smell distinction. So, number five, as we round off today, be desperate. Don't live a average life. Average life will give you average results. 
Be desperate. Don't just say, okay, everything will happen if you want to happen. It's a lie. Write it down. Until you happen, there are some things that will never happen. Your happening capacity, no, your happening speed will determine the returning capacity. Put it out there like that, please. Your happening speed, how things happen through you faster, will determine how things will come back to you easier. will come to you faster will determine how things leave you quicker. Be desperate to pay the price of life. Be desperate to support vision because your own is next. Be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate to go and love and you know and love your wife. Give your children's time. Be desperate to read those books. Be desperate. Be desperate to go to your pastor and support your pastor. Bless your pastor. Be desperate. Be desperate. Be desperate. That's why I put in the last one. You can't tell me you want to know. You're not desperate to know. Be desperate to know. Number four, pay attention. Number three, be curious. Number two, ready to know. And number one, ready to learn. That's all I got today. God bless you, everybody. What have you heard? What have you heard? October 5th, 2020, what have you heard? What have you learned? What have you heard and what have you learned? <laughs> okay. Announces people. Knowledge announces you, it creates you. I love that. Any other person, please? Any other person? What have you heard this morning, everybody? Okay. Why 
we are still expecting more people to, you know, to respond what they've learned. Look, okay. Wow. Thank you. I love that. There is no future in certificates. Everything that I'm doing today, I never did mask up. No. But I just love, I love it. Because I'm going to have my own radio, radio station. Christian radio station. I just watch them. I love it. People even told me, let me, and do you study mask up? I said, no. I just love it. Wow, yes, confidence. Thank you. I didn't see you again on Instagram. What happened? When I know, I will hold it. Yes, what you hold, what you know, you will hold. Everything I'm doing right now, you know, I heard Bishop Edebo teach, I heard Samadhi Amin teach, I heard, I heard Apostle John Suleiman teach, and everything is becoming part of me because I go home to wrestle, to fight. To rest, to compete with it. And in the process, I own it. How could somebody be teaching every day for 127 days if he doesn't know? Go and check it. There will never be the same teaching. Never. Why? I know it. I own it. I love that. So saying all that to say it, I'm still looking for people who are going to be part of what I did. This book right here, it's, uh, it's, my, it's my first child, first published child. I have a lot of books I'm working on. It's, uh, it's called Timeless Wisdom of Oedepo, of Dr. David Oedepo. Please, please, and please, if you know you have, been, you have been instructed by God, not everybody, and if you have not, go and pray about it. I need people who is going to support what we are doing. Oh, confidence is here. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's very dear to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, confidence. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, the book right here, I need people to be, we want to make it available to 100,000 people, 1 million downloads. I need you, you, I mean you, to be part of this. I'm not asking for money. I'm looking for partnership. Anyone who read this book will be blessed. So if they bless, they send in the blessing, you're going to be part of it. So I want you to please, let's do this together. Let's do this together. So if you are interested, if you are interested to be part of making that book available to people, to thousands, 100,000 people and uh, 1 million downloads. If you live your life based on how people receive you, then you don't know you called me. Wow! Shed Sing Global Group. I love what you're saying. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. He said, be desperate to support vision because your vision is led. Wow! Thank you, thank you, thank you. The wise we sow before harvest is expected. Wow! Come on, Chelsea. You're touching my heart. You're really hearing me. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, everybody, if you want to be part of making this book available, what I mean making it available is to partner. So we want to have it printed to 100,000 copies and 1 million downloads. Whatever amount you can sow, wherever you are around the world, please join me. Let's do this together. Like I said, I don't need, I live here. I work with the military. I have my money. But the Lord said, all oh, the people that you have a blessing, let them be part of the blessing that will come out from that book. So, if you know, it is not, normally, we, have, we live for 50 people who can give $200. But the Lord said, no, make it available to all. So, you have to send email. Send email to my new John TV. To be part of the, the book. 
send email to okay so to be part of the book send email to that okay so so to be part of the book send email to be part of the book what i mean by part of it you know to partner with us send email to my new john tv and somebody's going to respond to you on how you can be part of uh, anyway, you can somebody say I'm in Nigeria, I'm around the world, wherever you are, it does not matter. There's a way how we can get across to you that your seed will get to the right place. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Those who have sent their comments, those who have shared with us what they have learned, and confidence. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. So, I gotta go. I bless you today with the blessing of a father. That no devil will cross your path today. That this week, whatever you do, you will prosper. That if you call for one, seven will respond. That if you call for seven, twenty-one will respond. You will never lack helper. God will strengthen your hand to walk. It will strengthen your leg to make it happen. It will strengthen your hand to hold it. And it will strengthen your mind to receive it. It will strengthen your heart, mind to possess it. You will never be behind camera. The old world will see you. As you make things happen. This week is your week. Come back and celebrate. By this time next week. Next week Monday. I bet you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You are coming with your testimony. I force you into the, into the circle of, people, of successful people. You will walk there. You will meander there. They will help you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. God bless you everybody. God bless you. Yes, knowledge is the mother of light. You can never know. You can you will be walking in darkness if you don't know. If you don't know. I'm telling you one of the things I discover when knowledge is mother of light is that love does not keep marriage. It is the fear of God that does. Love does not keep marriage. I have deployed for 10 months in the Navy. When I came back, my wife is in touch. I'm still in touch. How did I do it? Many, many people came back, they came back divorced. Because if you don't have the fear of God, you will train on the, on, the, on the wrong path. You will see every lady you see, you want to go after. Every man you see, you want to go after. No, it's lack of knowledge. And you have to pray for people who are living that kind of life. Remember, I thank you what you said, what you just brought down. He said, knowledge is what? Is the mother of light. You need knowledge, so your beauty is not what you need. It's good, your beauty is good, but no knowledge. And if you want to get married to somebody that you like, you have to be who you like. Be yourself first. And God will attract the right, right people to you. Know that you are designed for royalty and you cannot afford to settle for less. Bless you too, sir. Thank you so much for, for today. Wow, you're welcome, man. Thank you, man. So, everybody, God bless you. As you go out this week, don't ever think you are a secondary, you are second citizen, second citizen. You are a primary one. You have the right to be who God wants you to be. Know that you are a king and you are a queen. You cannot settle for less. You cannot take part of it. You have to take all of it. You determine what the rest of people take. Don't be slow. You have the capacity to take your word. Go and make things happen. In the name of Jesus. Forget everything. Don't forget this. You are designed for royalty. You cannot afford to settle for less. Once again... This is Talk to Life. Any money, unlimited inspiration with Roti Miyadidoku. I love you and thank you for your support. Thank you for everything that you have done. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same place. On this very platform, Talk to Life. If you don't talk to life, life might not give you what you want. God bless you.